So tell us your name and your, your position. My name is Salvin Engelfried and I'm a parish priest in Southern Africa, specifically the Diocese of Southern Bay. And uh, when you heard about this conference, what interested you about it? I think the whole topic at the moment, especially as the Anglican Communion is dealing with it, and also my particular interest in studies with the New Testament and sexuality as well. Now yesterday we had a panel in the morning of people just LGBT people telling their stories and what they've experienced. How did those impress you? I think it was a good thing to hear where people are and the stories that we've listened to were where people are at at this moment and how they feel about um, the subject that we are talking about. But I was specifically intrigued about the story of the African church, specifically the Anglican church, and how um, they deal with the issue of human sexuality. In the afternoon, when Grace presented his, his uh, piece of the panel, and he talked about how African churches, not so much Southern African province, but the rest of the continent, sort of viewed the movement on LGBT issues, particularly in the Episcopal Church. Uh, you know, kind of a kind of a dark picture of you know what people's motives were and all that. What did you think about Grace's presentation? Well, I think there there's still a lot of work that have to be done. But on a personal level, especially being part of Africa, but of Southern Africa, I, I, I my mind, uh, you know, there were things that you've mentioned that was mind blowing, and I felt personally to a certain extent, and I've said to myself that one need to engage more on this whole subject but specifically within an African context because to a certain extent what is shared there were things that I didn't know and so one of the things that I would want to do and pursue is to get more involved in the conversation within the African context on this particular subject. What do you think is the way to take that conversation forward? What's the format or the group or whatever? How do we, well, maybe there's no we in it. Maybe Americans have no role in it. But what's the best way to take that conversation forward? The things that we are currently doing now is simply by listening to each other and continue dialogue, continue conversation, and simply understand where we're coming from with our various backgrounds and um, our own uh, prejudices also that we bring into the conversation. Uh, the main thing simply is just to continue to listen to each other um, until we get to a point where we can really understand each other where we are. Yeah. And that anticipates my last question a little bit, which is, you know, we're going to leave uh, in 24 hours or so. Where would you like to see us be? What would you like to see come out of this meeting? What I would like to see that the participants who have been present here is to take this conversation and, and take it to our different contexts where we come from and um, allow the people, if not be part of this, but allow conversation more on the outside. Um, and and in some other way, listening more to the voices uh, who's on the outside, they're not specifically part of this consultation. So, so an outreach of an outreach of sort. Do you have any notion about how we might go about that? Well, I would say that the participants who are here presently should make that commitment mm -hmm. and somehow take this conversation into the context where we are. Right. and um, somehow find a mechanism in, in trying to find ways of recording what is said and bring it inside into a, a consultation like this. Maybe we should make a video that we could. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is one of the ways. That is one Here of the ways go. for people to see. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thanks very much.